Please call me the Lord, and uh, I want to welcome all of our guests tonight. We certainly appreciate you being here. And we're going to stand and uh, have our pledge of allegiance and our invocation. I'll give an invocation, and Francis, would you lead us in the play at that point? Can you go ahead and do the pledge of allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. should be open about the second week of May, is that correct, Erica? And starting each Wednesday, they have what they call Sneak Peek Wednesday. So you can take a tour of the building each Wednesday, about 10 to 12, something like that. I'm from like 9 to 11. 9 to 11, um, starting each Wednesday. So that's just a few more weeks. So she's here today, and, uh, but she was too shy to come up here in front of anybody. So. We thank her for being here, and they do a great job. The building, the building looks beautiful, and we're looking forward to having the sisters living here now. There's several residents already going to be moving in there, and we saw plans uh, last Friday. Right, Friday morning. So the building is great. In just a few more weeks, it'll be open. So, Eric, thank you. And once again, I'll give that number up if you're watching on TV. It's 921-0083. And call Eric and she can tell you anything you need to know about that building. Did you say the state page starts when? Starts on Wednesday. Starting this, this Wednesday. This Wednesday. Mm -hmm. From, you say, did you say 9 to 11? 11. 9 okay. to 11. Sorry. So thank you, Eric, for being here tonight. Appreciate you being here. Okay, the first thing we have, our second thing is a recommendation to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? How much? Next on the agenda is the recommendation to approve the council's payable bills. Is there a motion to approve paying those bills? I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll say it. All in favor say aye. Number four is a recommendation to purchase the 2012 full full pickup for the water department. This is from the state of Alabama Transportation Equipment uh, Bureau for $19,500. Um, is there a motion to purchase this truck? I'll make a motion. Second. Okay. Like this is a truck we're using in the water department for replacing one of the uh, sewer plants. And, uh, that's what we do with this truck. So all in favor say aye. Thank you. Number five, uh, we may need to do some discussion on this. There's a recommendation to accept a proposal from GNC Supply Company on quote of $415 for speed bumps and size on a portion of the Academy Drive. Uh, this particular street has had several complaints about speeding up and down this road. And the quote is covers speed bumps and the signs. That's why I put them on there. Uh, for us to uh, purchase. If there's any discussion on that, we can do that now before we vote on it. You know, Tim, you're asking this question about it. Well, go. I mean, how many you talk about? I think it's two. It's two. Uh, You've got a copy there. Save the two inch black and yellow. Save your stripe speed bumps. Are we also going to um, 
lower the speed limit on that road yes. or will it work? Okay. It's also post two signs to put on that street. Because we've had trouble with some complaints in that particular area. So that would be our recommendation. But well, I don't, have, to I don't have anything against the speed bumps, and especially in areas where there's small children and uh, the houses are close together, and it definitely is not a place to speed. Uh, I live on Still Street, and it's like 278. I'm just wondering, uh, will this open up more requests for more? It's right. very possible, you know. But, <clears throat> well, we said, Chief, out there and do a little monitoring that road before we can try this. So we've done some ticket writing and stuff out there. We were setting some complaint of yards. We've done some ticket writing of that nature. What's the speed limit? I think it's 25. What is it? Does it still continue? Since you've been doing this? So if we lower me I could pay if it is still continuing or it's still ceasing. What size speed bumps are we talking about? Uh, it says 72 inch. I don't know the height. But it's not the focus. I remember one time I looked at Mayor Sims, we looked into that, we kind of backed out of that. Uh, they have some problem, liability problems on that. We nearly, nearly put those speed books on. Scott, what's the liability? I mean, if somebody's speeding, it's I mean, I mean, certainly yeah. I don't see how we'd be liable for that. Yeah. As long as we had the least speed limit, we'd have the signs up there for giving proper notice for it. I think I think the city would be fine. And obviously, assuming that the speed bumps are you know, installed properly, it would be okay from the legal standpoint. As long as we give notice. And it is a street that it's a reduced speed limit, even at 25. So uh, cars should be traveling at a safe enough speed to go over. So we're going to lower it from 25 to somewhere. Well, Scott says we need to vote on this. If we purchase this, we still need to make a, another motion separately to lower the speed limit from 25 to 15 with proper signs. Or even if we don't purchase it, we, we don't. Exactly. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what, what's your all's recommendation? Is the problem from up there at the top of the hill where you turn off onto that Academy Drive? Is that it is such a straight shot that goes across that little creek and up cut the off road cut off? They're turning off the military and coming across there. Maybe they're trying to avoid, you know, going to the red lights or whatever. But there's a lot of traffic on the road. It's, it's not folks that live there. I think it's a problem. You know, a lot of through traffic. Mm -hmm. And cut from 43 over to Baxter. Cut from 43 over to Baxter, correct. So, I mean, I'm open to whatever council suggests, and I've got them here to, to make the recommendation, but I'm also open to, if you want to try to lower the first speed limit, we can do that. I would not try to lower the speed limit. I just, I'm kind of like peeing a little. You want to try to lower the speed limit first? You know how that works? You have to be the whole screen with it. Yeah. Right. Chief Nims. Still monitor that screen up there for a while. But it's, what he's saying is true. Is it, it's a bypass that goes around, goes in by the Young Hall place and comes out above Bama Q. Mm -hmm. and it's quicker to get around the light, especially in the afternoon. School traffic, work traffic. Okay. Well, that's when somebody needs to be sitting next. But if you're not sure about the sign of the uh, speed bumps, why don't we, someone make a motion to lower that from 25 to 15? I'll make a motion to lower it. 
On this street, on Academy. On Academy. We'll monitor that. If that doesn't work, then we'll come back next time. It's just going to be all the way from the Omaha place, all the way around the military. Whatever Academy is. The entire street. I mean, we can do, we can do sections okay. of it or the entire. What's the rest of it, Randy? The rest of it, I think it's all 25, all the way around through there. But it's all residential, correct? But it, does it not? It runs up in front of uh, Miss Cobb's house, so that yeah. Yeah. Just leave the 15 the whole street. Maybe the other one. That's the easiest way. That's the easiest way. Not having it. Pardon me. It does. It runs across the street. All the way around. He goes up the hill. That'll be. Whereas, he's driving here to the academy. Yeah. That'll be. Going down by the Omaha place. Next recommendation is to approve the Goodwill Mills and Kaywood proposal for, for professional services for Phase 1 fee of $4,500 for structural assessment and report on existing conditions of much more building. Before we do that, Kurt, I'd like for you to address the council on this proposal and what this covers and the reason for it. All right, Mike. That was good for me. All right, the... Uh, Proposal we have, we've broken it into to two parts on the building. Uh, phase one is a structural assessment. We'll have a structural engineer come down and uh, do a do a once over on the building and give us a written report of what he uh, what his assessment of the structure of the building is, what, what, what it's in, what kind of shape it's in. Um, and assuming that goes well, then we can move on to phase two, which would be bringing in the architects and mechanical, electrical guys. And, and going from there. Uh, if, if the report doesn't come back good, we'll just stop there. We'll just stop at the, at the phase one. And not, there's no reason to move forward if the, if the structure is not any good. I'm just a little curious. How were you able to give us the estimates on repairing the roof and all these other estimates without knowing that, uh, that the structure was sound? Those are conceptual budgets. Well, the roof, the roof, the roof's pretty simple. We know we just, you know, we have a pretty good idea of what it costs per square foot to re-roof a, a structure of that size. Uh, the other, the other ones were, you know, rough conceptual numbers. So it was just one on the assumption that it was. Yes. Okay. And I think in this article somewhere. <clears throat> Someone not already say that it was structurally sound? Was that just an assumption also? It, it seems to be structurally sound, but we haven't had a structural engineer to actually come and do a full-blown assessment. <coughs> I was thinking we'd already paid for somebody that had last counts or something. Is that the environment? Yeah, there was, there was some. There was. Some, I think it started. There was some preliminary environmental work done um, right after the building was was given to the city. I think there was a prospect that, that was looking at it. And they, they started the uh, the other part of the proposal that you have on the environmental. Uh, they started that, but didn't get very far into it before they they shut that down. Are these studies how long they good for? Did we say five years at one time? Or? Oh, the, you know, the, I don't know how, the structural is good for as long as the, you know, 
whatever parts of the structure he looks at are now. You know, structural is not going to change unless conditions in the building change. And they do some environmental. That is some preliminary, yes, that is some preliminary work on the environment. And so that's good for it. Would we, if we do, okay, or the environmental they did or the environmental we're proposing to do? That they did. The environmental they did, they didn't get very far. So they didn't get far enough along. They didn't get far enough along to actually do any set. kind of report okay. or, or any kind of paperwork okay. on the, 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 the environmental mm -hmm. first time around. So after phase one of the structural inspection or assessment is done, you'll come back and give us a report, and that's yep. going to take uh, the three weeks, a month. Less than 30 days. Uh, and it'll be, it'll be a written report from the structural engineer that we can give you a copy of. Based on that, determine whether we pursue the next phase, which would be architectural or architectural mechanical or mechanical or what There's no reason to pursue that. Right. It, you know, initially we talked about bringing everybody down at once, but mm -hmm. we decided it would be Correct. Uh, a better idea to do structural separate. If it comes back not good, then there's no reason to do problem. Okay. Then I make a motion we do it. Okay. Harry's made a motion that we pursue structural assessment first. I'll second. Okay, Tim, thank you. Any other discussion on this? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, next, Kurt, just keep the seat right there. Yeah. There's a recommendation to approve the proposal for cost estimate for 8 a.m. voluntary cleanup program phase one for the most of our facility. And phase one is for uh, $5,240. Tell us why all that includes. And like I said, they did start this a couple of administrations ago. They had a possible uh, Tenant made at that time, prospect for that building, right? But it wasn't enough done to even finish a report. Is that correct? That's correct. What they did, what they did then was uh, the the beginning work of phase one. Uh, what what the phase one part is there is to develop an initial assessment plan. Uh, it's basically to decide what parts that you're going to where you're going to take samples, uh, where what, where you're going to take water samples, where you're going to take soil samples. Um, looking at the site, determining you know what the best places to go for runoff and those type of things are, uh, and that work was started and, and then stopped before the, uh, the full legal plan was developed. Uh, and so that's what this phase one is: is to develop, to develop the plan, and then phase two goes along with that to follow through with the plan, to take the soil samples, to have them analyzed, to take the water samples, to go through all the process of. Uh, determining whether or not there is any contamination on the site. Uh, and at that point, that's phase one and phase two. Uh, at that point, again, it's time to stop and look. If the site is clean, if, if it meets current regulations, then we're good. And we're done and we're ready to move forward with whatever we want to do out there. Uh, if it is contaminated, then that's when phase three comes into effect. Uh, you have to develop a cleanup plan and have it approve it and then follow through with the cleanup plan and have them come and look at it and make sure you did what you said you were going to do and give their concurrence on it. But what you're saying is phase one isn't any good without phase two. That's You've correct. got to have one and two okay. together. One and two so are together. So why are we just voting on Well, that's just one. where we had on the agenda, so it would really need to be phase one. It would need to be phase one and phase okay. two. That's it's not done first, but that's just I didn't know we need to do it both at one time. Yeah. One, one is just getting ready. Okay. Just making the plans of where you're going to take the samples from and those sort of things. Uh, also on page three of the of the proposal, there's some ADMV. Uh, the first two, the application review and the assessment review, those would be involved in phase one and phase two. And those those that's not RP that's that's directly to ADM for their involvement. Okay. There's a the third page, uh, right where it says potential ADM beams. Application review and assessment review. Those are fees that ADM charges to be involved in the process. 
Okay, so what's the total for tonight? The estimated cost of phase one, phase two, and these fees? Uh, it would be 30, 39, for phase one and phase two on our end, and then 98, 30 to 80. Roughly. How much to aid them, did you say? A little less than 10,000, right around 10,000. Oh, it's the uh, application the review two. and assessment. Okay, yeah, I get two. you. And this has to be done before anything can be done with the land. This, this is your, this will determine whether or not the, there's contamination that right. needs to be cleaned up or if you're in good shape and there's nothing needs to be done. Basically, that's like York told us all. I mean, I knew this, but we well, ain't had a little bit the other night before we both spent that twenty some thousand dollars. That's what I said. It's, 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 it's kind of getting the cart full of horse, look at me like. Well, the water, the. It was separate. I mean, it wouldn't have to be at the Munsonware property. You know, the assessment for the water uh, feasibility study, uh, <coughs> if we pursue this study, it would still be, you know, separate, of course, separate from this. I know what you're saying, Tim, because that's, you know, the property you're talking about. We're going to put it for everybody to count it. Look at that. Yeah, the. It is expensive. It is, yeah. Uh, uh, it, we do have, I was telling the mayor, I, I, I was made aware of this on the way over here. I was talking to our environmental guy to make sure I knew all the timelines for everything. Um, in the last six months, I guess, we've hired a lady uh, who spent the last 15 to 20 years at ADM in, in this department. Uh, and this is the Voluntary Cleanup Remediation Department of ADM. She works for us now. With the environmental guys, so uh, it would make things go fairly smooth through this process. She knows the ins and outs and everything that uh, we would need to do, who we would need to talk to, who we would need to go for, those sort of things. So, how long are we looking at on this? 30 to 45 days. And that's phase one and two? Yes, ma'am. Probably take a couple of weeks for the phase one and then move right on into the taking the samples and getting them analyzed and the report written Well, this feasibility study, uh, am I wrong? I mean, this was for the aquatic facility. This was, didn't have anything to do with the building itself. The aquatic feasibility yeah. study? Yeah. It doesn't have, doesn't have anything to do with the That's right. Building. That's what I thought. For the 27 five. So this is entirely different. I mean, you got the ground and put it up there. Well, this is, they're talking about the ground, not the building. Here we're talking about the parking and the steel. Okay. Okay. Well, they did the whole four years? Yes, this is the whole property. Right. This is an assessment of the, the entire piece of property. And if we um, were to try to get that building built for an industry or a business or Anything. <clears throat> this would this study needs to be done. Bottom yes, the, yes. So if, if you're going to bring in, if you're going to bring in the industry or, or something there, nobody's going to loan any money until you have this. This study's going to be necessary to, to make any improvements to that. That's going to remodel it or water. Or my promotion that we accepted phase one, phase two, to the volunteer. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Yeah. Uh, Kurt, also next Monday night, yeah. uh, tell us what, just for the folks who know, paper and television, what that first oh, public. The, yes, next Monday night's the uh, public meeting uh, for the feasibility, for the aquatic feasibility study. Uh, have we set it for what time? We set it for six. 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 Uh, set the feasibility study for six o'clock. Uh, it's an open public meeting. We invite anybody and everybody to be a, a part of that. Uh, there'll be a presentation on similar size uh, facilities, 
towns that put in uh, similar facilities to what we're, what we're having in our minds, at least at this point, uh, and a talk of, of what types of facilities, what types of amenities are at those facilities, and then a general discussion. Uh, anybody that has ideas or thoughts or whatever, we'll, we'll take those into account as we move forward. Uh, this is not to make any final decisions on the on what will or will not be in it. Uh, this is to develop our conceptual plan to decide what we'll be basing our budget numbers on. Well, that's the first step of getting public input. And you get, yeah, we we'll get to public input as to what they would or would not so like to see. might be for it or against it. It's their opportunity to come and give their opinion. Give their opinion. Anything else? Downtown update. Downtown is uh, in, uh, doing doing well. Uh, we, we caught some two or three weeks of really good weather, and they were able to make a lot of progress. Uh, the lights that are up are lit. Uh, if you've had a chance to get down there and see that, that's really nice. We're really, really excited about that. Uh, the landscapers are, are moving forward with all their work. Uh, within the next two weeks, most of the landscape work, most of the lighting, most of Concrete work should be done. Uh, we should be looking at, at paving crews coming in here. And this will start and hopefully next 14 <coughs> paving. That's my understanding. That, that's the hope. That's the hope. That's next Monday. Pa paving crews are notorious for moving mm -hmm. dates. Uh, but that's why so if we're you. hoping by the end of this month to be completely done. Ballard's plan is by the end of this month to be completely done. One of these lights goes out. Does that level fire change that, or are we responsible for those, or how the lights change will do that? These are your lights. Uh, you, you have purchased these lights. These are, these are yours. I hope they last a long time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Uh, number eight is reactivation of Seth Kim Walker. To step down in the street department. Superintendent returned to equipment operator and changed his rate of pay to 15 15 per hour. Uh, Kevin has uh, asked us to step down and go back in the department. Uh, and we will be posting his job here in just a few minutes. But this is a reputation to accept his. And the reason is we've had openings in this department where he can move down. It's not not be create a new slot by hiring somebody else. There's a slot on him to go to. So my recommendation to accept his recommendation. I'll make a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor say aye. And by the way, Kevin's done a fantastic job. This is his idea. He just feels more comfortable. I think being in the fall. Not any reflection on him. He's done, he's done a great job. <coughs> So the next would be a recommendation to advertise for a street department superintendent. And we voted um, several months ago to post these jobs. So we will be posting a street superintendent job. And I do have a job description to go by. So when uh, any uh, one that comes and puts an application in, we've got the uh, description of what this job entails. So we'll run it for two weeks. Is that right? Hopefully by the 1st of May. You know, maybe by the next meeting, or we can be conducting some interviews, and by the first of May, have be ready to hire someone to take this position. So, if somebody calls in and says, "Oh, I've already got an application on file," do you tell them, "Oh, come in and redo it and pick up the now, job description"? Or? They can come give us a job description. There's, we've got a lot of uh, applications on file. We've probably got a folder that thick full of applications. So, to be considered, they have to come pick up. They need to come a copy here. of the job description. Exactly. So we'll know. And they can call City Hall 921-2121 for that. And it'll be in the paper. We'll put it in the paper. So the recommendation to advertise the street park is in Same department, but this will be for just a street department for you. Uh, it will not be a superintendent, it will just be a regular job in the street department. So I need a recommendation to advertise this job also. 
Number 11 is a recommendation to declare a certain property located at the Center is no longer needed for municipal purposes. We're going to take some property, some of those old lawn and stuff, and sell those to apply that toward the new one we just bought. In order to do that, we have to declare it uh, no longer needed. So is there a motion to, to do that so we can sell that property? I think there's a few old lawn mowers that can't be used. Francis got a motion. Is there a second? Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. Number 12 is a recommendation to approve the purchase of turnout gear for volunteer uh, firefighters not to exceed 10000 which is in our general fund budget. When we did a budget last year, we did put money in the general, in their each department's fund, and uh, out of this fund is equipment that needs to be purchased or has to be purchased. And Tim, uh, Chief Rock, you would come and explain that to us. Yeah, we, we bought some last year and then we put in it again. We need about 15 cents is what we need, but we're trying to replace them a little bit at a time. And uh, Nashville Fire, I believe it was, they changed color or their turnout gear or something. Well, this company that we've been getting our gear from bought it and we can get this stuff for high price. It's brand new, still in the bag, still sealed up, if they've got our sizes. And that's why I'm coming to you tonight to see if we can get a jump on it and see if we can get some of this. It'd be high price, but it's still brand new. They just changed colors and this company bought it for bought it back from them and uh, they're selling half price. And hope we can get some and get the sizes and uh, get several of it replaced. How many did you say the other we need 15, yeah. but we put in a budget for five, which would be around $10,000 or about $2,000 a set. And we can get a set for $1,000 now. They, they cut it to high price if they've got it in our sizes that we need. And they're still brand new. And it's going to volunteers. Yes. Because in the officers, you guys got some. We got some last year. Yes. So you don't need any. No. And it's going to the volunteers that work the most. Yeah. The ones that responded most. That's are those the ones they have already torn or worn? Yeah, we've got, uh, and I went through them today, and uh, we've got, and we've got a, some that needs coats, some that needs pants. When we get a new set, we pass it down, what's still good. And it, we got, we need some of them these coats and some of them need pants and then some of them need a complete set. So it's so you buy them separate actually. Yes. It comes to set, but this it's not you can buy a cover, you, you can buy pants, but a set way. use a coat and pants, we try to buy at the same time. It's around two thousand dollars a piece. So it's pretty much open stock. Yes. <clears throat> How old are these you got? The ones we've got now are seven years old. Is that about the lots? Yeah, you can so you can get sometimes you can get ten years out of them, but prior we got uh, we got a I think Barron got a grant ten years ago about seven years ago, and we replaced everybody's in the department, and they're just wearing out now. You can get five to ten years it just depends on how much they're used. Well, I make a motion that we uh, do this, get all we can for that. I'll second. So, Greg, I mean, Tim, if we get this, then uh, we won't have to come back next year and ask for more. Hopefully not. <laughs> and Francis made a motion, and Greg has made a second to purchase this, not to, not to exceed you. You may not spend that much. That right? not. Hopefully. Okay. All right, so, uh, got a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Tim, right there, while you're there, just uh, the other night we had our work session, you was telling us about one of the pumper trucks, number 327, that um, did not pass the pump test. It worked, but it needs some work. Yeah, it had a the this primer. Is, tell us about this right here. The primer motor pump went out on it when they were doing the test. And uh, 
when he went out, it started failing the test, and then on it wouldn't hold suction. And uh, we know it has to have a primer motor and a pump put on it. And I uh, got an estimate on that. It was around $1,900. And then, uh, but we don't know if that's what's completely wrong with it. And they won't know until they get it to the shop and tear into it and see what all's messed up in the pump on it. Uh, the worst case scenario would be ninety eight hundred, ten thousand dollars to fix it, but where they think, just talking to them on the phone, that it's the primer pump and motor, and uh, they can fix it for around two grand. So we're hoping it's not. We're hoping it's not the impeller. You take it to Decatur tomorrow. Night. That's correct. So this is approximate high end of what it could be. The high end would be ten thousand, yes. Sir. And this is a truck, uh, the ninety five model. Yes. That um, which linked us with what else? Pumper trucks. Uh, the new one one we got those seven and uh, eight and three more. When they fix it, does it have a warning? Yes, it will have a warning on the bar on the parts. <laughs> I'll make a motion that we approve this. Thank you, Greg. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, Tim. Any other discussion on repairing this truck? That's all in favor, say aye. Tim, while you're there, I know you got a call today uh, before we adjourn. Uh, we've been concerned about our ISO. We're trying to get prepared for our ISO. You got a call today, and they are going to be here when? July 1st. July 1st. So that's mm -hmm. when. Between now and July, uh, we've already working on a plan to be ready for them, but then tell us what that tell us when they but come. They'll come in and do a survey of the communications department, which is the 911. That makes up 10% of it. Fire department makes up 50% of it. Uh, water department's 30 or 40%. They'll have to flow hydrants. They'll do go around and check the stations and the buildings and make sure we got the right equipment. How long does that take to do that? They can do, do it well. We, we started on it today. I, right after I got off the phone with him, he sent me an email with stuff to get started on. So it takes about three, two months to get all of it together and then when he comes in, he'll just have to sit down and look at, look at it all. How long after he comes on July 1st will he let us know about our current I think it's within 30 days. We'll know if it changes from a four to yes, five sir. or whatever. Yes, sir. So we have a plan in place to try to keep it where it's at. That's correct. And then they will give you, uh, I think, as long as you put a plan in place and you're working on it, they will uh, allow you six months, maybe even a year, to get back to where you need to be. So if we're working on new equipment, those trucks that are having problems, then if they say that we're making a conscientious effort, then they will go on. Yeah, they'll, they'll work with you pretty good on it. Well, they did back when they came in 2002, I guess it was the last time they were there. Is it the same time? No, it's a different one. Okay. They would have recommend a change in the rating. How long would it be in effect, I reckon? I, I don't really know when it takes effect. Uh, I don't know if it'll be. But they'll give us within, plenty of time yeah, they, to correct that before. They can give us time to correct whatever they see is wrong. And we have the time and a chance to do and make the right steps to get it correct. Okay. That's all we have tonight. Do uh, we have any other announcements? So at this time, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. Okay, great. Is there a second? Thank you.